I've made this exact same video now like 10 times. But if you're interested in learning programming, I think that this Kraken example is actually the best one for you to just sort of get your feet wet and play around with. What's up YouTube? My name's Rhett. I'm a software engineer and entrepreneur living in Houston, Texas. And today I have another video for you guys that's very similar to the videos that I've done in the past on Gemini and FTX US and Coinbase Pro. But today I'm going to be adding the ability for you guys to make recurring purchases of Bitcoin or whatever other cryptocurrency you want on one of the oldest cryptocurrency exchanges that's still on the market, Kraken. The best part about this in my mind is I like to have all of my finances completely automated. So if you like saving money on fees and if you like totally automating your finances, this video and this video series really is going to be really helpful for you guys. So go down below and smash the like button for releasing the Kraken and let's level up your brains. <laughs> All right, guys, I wasn't sure if we we're going to need this, but it turns out we actually do need it because we need to import the requests module and you'll see why in a minute here. But the first thing you're going to do when we come to this notion page is click on this Kraken layer.zip and you're just going to download this to your desktop. This Kraken layer.zip allows us down here to send get requests and post requests to Kraken's API. And so without that, this import requests piece of code here in the script is going to fail. And so after you've downloaded your Kraken layer.zip, you're going to come over to console.aws.amazon.com and if you're not familiar with AWS or why we use it on this channel, I'll leave a link to a video that I did in the past up in the cards and down in the description. So check that video out if you are new to AWS. The main bullet points that you need to know here are that we're using AWS so that we can automate our scripts. Your laptop is probably not on 24-7, 365, but AWS is on 24-7, 365. And then this whole process is totally free. Lambda functions are free. And then the automation that we're going to show you later on is also totally free. Definitely check that video out if you do want help opening up an AWS. AWS account, it is also totally free, but for everyone else, I'm just going to continue here. And the first thing you're going to do up here is search for Lambda. Click on Lambda here. And the first time you come to Lambda, you're going to go over to the left-hand side here and click on layers. And you're going to click on create layer. We'll call this layer Kraken requests, upload our zip file, and we'll use this Kraken layer.zip that we just downloaded. It's going to be x86-64 and it's going to be Python 3.8. And you can go ahead and click on create here. If you've used any of the other scripts on this channel and you already have a Gemini layer.zip or a Coinbase layer, Layer.zip or an FTX layer.zip or anything like that. Requests is actually included in all of those layer.zips. And so you're not actually going to have to create a new one for Kraken. You only need this if you've never done this process before. And that's just because we're using the requests module in basically every package. And so over in Gemini, when we import layer.zip for Gemini, we're importing requests, we're importing Gemini. For Coinbase Pro, we're importing requests and Coinbase Pro. And so for Kraken, even though there's no Python library because I coded all of this up myself, there is still that request module that we need to make our Python script work. So once we've imported that layer, let's come back to Lambda. And once we're back here on Lambda, we're just going to come up to the top right and click on create function. We're going to call this function by crypto with Kraken. We're going to change the runtime to Python 3.8. And we're going to leave the architecture at x86.64. We're going to scroll down and click on create function. And the first thing we're going to do here when we've created our function is scroll down to add a layer. And we're just going to add that custom layer that we just created a couple seconds ago. Mine was called Kraken requests. So you'll click on custom layers, Kraken requests, version one, and we'll hit add. And again, if you have already imported the Gemini layer, or the Coinbase Pro layer, or anything like that, you can go ahead and use the exact same layer that you've used for your other scripts because we do just need the requests module. You're going to scroll down to buy crypto on Kraken, and you're just going to copy this whole thing right here. We're going to just highlight all this code that's already here. We're going to backspace and just delete all of it. And then we're going to paste that code that we copied from Kraken. Kraken. You'll notice when we paste that code, it's going to say changes not deployed. And what that means basically is that you're seeing this code here in your screen, but AWS hasn't picked up those changes yet until you go ahead and click on this deploy button. So you'll see that every time you change the code, you're going to have to redeploy. So if you do ever make a code change, just make sure that you have deployed and that it doesn't say changes need to be deployed here. And you'll see that it's successfully updated after I click that deploy button. All right, guys, next we're going to jump over to Kraken and we're going to generate API keys to link our specific Kraken. Kraken accounts with the code that we've just pasted here in AWS. So let's head over to Kraken. We'll click on our names here in the top right. We'll click on security and we'll click on API. You guys will probably not have anything here. I have a couple API keys that are outstanding, but you can go ahead and click on add key. We'll call this key YouTube demo for now. You could call it whatever you want, just so you know what it is. And for permissions here, we're going to give it the permissions to query funds, to query open and closed orders, to create and modify orders, to cancel and close orders. And that's about it. You can allow IP whitelist 
listing here for extra security, but you're gonna have to find out what the IP address of your AWS Lambda function is. And I'll have a tutorial for that down in the description, but it is a little more involved. So I'm gonna leave this off for now. You can also set a key expiration date. So if you only wanted to use this until like August 31st, and then you wanted to make a new one, you could do that. I'm gonna turn that off as well. And then you can add some more parameters down here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and generate a key. It's gonna ask me for my two-factor authentication code. If you don't have two-factor authentication set up, I highly suggest that you do. And I'll have a video up in the cards that explains to you guys why two-factor authentication is so important. All right, guys, so I just put in my two-factor authentication code here. Next, I'm going to copy this API key and I'm gonna come back to the script. I'm gonna scroll down until I find this place here that says configure API keys. I'm gonna paste that first key into API key public. And then I'm gonna go back to Kraken. And I'm gonna copy this private key here. I'm gonna put it in API key private. It's very important, first of all, that you save your keys if you're gonna to want to reuse them like this. If you do ever lose your keys or someone finds out what your keys are, you can just come in here and delete your keys and just regenerate them using the exact same steps that we just followed. It is also very important not to share your API keys with anyone or they will be able to do all of these things on your behalf. So you don't want other people to be able to deposit and withdraw funds or to query open orders and do all of this other stuff without your permission. So don't share your API keys with anyone that you don't trust. So we'll go ahead. We've copied our API keys to a safe place in that Lambda function and we'll just hit save. So now our YouTube demo API keys are live. Again, these are just demo keys. I'm going to delete them after this video because I don't want people trading on my behalf, right? So don't share your API keys with anyone. But now once we've done that, we can go ahead, come back here, click on deploy. And now we can go ahead and try to test our function. Call the event name test and we'll just scroll down and hit save. And out of the box, the script is set up to buy $10 of this symbol, which is Bitcoin US dollars. This is the one weird symbol that Kraken is giving us. There is no BTC USD on Kraken. It's XXBTZ USD. Normal things, Ethereum USD is just ETH USD, but for whatever reason, Bitcoin is XXBTZ USD. And so you'll see that we're buying $10 of Bitcoin with no leverage at the limit price of the coin bid, which is just below the current spot price of what Bitcoin US dollars is trading at. All right, now we're ready to test. So let's just go ahead, head over to Kraken. We'll see that I have $10.50 of USD balance and 0 0.0007. 76 Bitcoin. So let's come back here. And when we click test, we should see that we're going to try to buy 10 US dollars of XX BTC USD, which is again, BTC USD. So let's go ahead and hit test. We'll see that it succeeded here when it says done error and there's no errors, right? And then there's a result that says that we've tried to buy this amount of Bitcoin at the limit price 21305.4. So let's go ahead back to Kraken. And if we refresh this page, we can see actually that it filled so fast that we never got to see that it was open. We'll see that I only have 40 cents of US dollars left. The $10 was spent in this order right here. And the you know amount of Bitcoin that I have has been incremented by 0 0.000469, whatever. So if we click on this order ID here, we can see some of the details of our order because unfortunately we didn't get to see it. It filled too quickly. And you will actually see that it was a maker fee order. We actually had no taker fee. And that was because we were able to set a limit order just under the spot price of what Bitcoin was currently trading for. It's important that we take advantage of the maker fee instead of the taker fee. We can see here our order was fully a maker fee and we paid 1.6 cents on our $10 order, which a 1.6 cent fee on a $10 order is a 0.16% fee. It's not as competitive as something like FTX US, but it is slightly better than something like Gemini. And I think there are coin pairs here on Kraken that just are not available on other trading platforms. And you can see here in Kraken's fee structure, maker fees start at 0.16% and taker fees start at 0.26%. So you're saving that 0.1% fee and you saw how fast the order filled. Normally the disadvantage of a maker order is that you know it might not fill right away and that's still true here. It might not fill right away, but probably it will fill right away because there's just so much liquidity on Kraken's exchange. And so we're really getting the best of both worlds when we use this script. All right guys, so now we've seen that this script works and that we can use it to make one-time buys of whatever US dollar amount we want down here. If you wanted to change this to a hundred dollars, you could just change it to a hundred dollars, hit deploy, and then it would buy a hundred dollars for you on whatever schedule you want. So next let's go ahead and define that schedule. So let's come up here to the search bar on AWS and we'll type in event bridge. We'll see Amazon event bridge here and we'll click on that. We'll see this giant orange button that says create a rule and we'll click on that. We'll call this Kraken automation and we'll create a schedule. And here we can either say something very basic like once every 26 hours or once every 26 minutes or once every five days. And if you use a set
setup like this once every five days, for example. When you create this rule, today will be the first day. It will execute the script for the first time when we finalize this schedule. And then five days from now will be the second time of execution. The other option you have here is for a fine grain schedule using a cron expression. So we can say something like every day at 5, 12 in the morning on the 15th day of the month, maybe when you get your paycheck. Every month, we don't care what day of the week it is on every year. Then we can see here that once a month, this will be buying Bitcoin at 5, 12 in the morning, right? And you could change this from UTC to your local time zone if you wanted. I'm in central time. So this is now, you know, 12, 12 in the morning. I prefer to just leave it at UTC and do that calculation on my own. But, you know, you could do whatever you want here. People are starting to call central time Texas time, which I'm super down for. But I think we just need, you know, the rest of the world to adopt to that. And you can do whatever you want here. You could change this to the 15th and the 30th of every month or like the 15th and the 17th and the 30th of every month. So we can see July 30th will be the next execution, then the 15th, then the 17th, 30th, so on and so forth. You could make this a question mark and you could say, I want to do it on Monday and Tuesday of every week. And so you can see July 18th, July 19th, July 25th, July 26th, and so on and so forth. You can really play with this as much as you want. Just be aware that if these next 10 trigger dates don't show up, if you like put something dumb in here like poop, these will only show up if you have a valid cron expression. So down in the description, I'll leave some popular cron expressions that I've used before. And then I'll also show you AWS's help page for how to build your own cron expression. But for now, I'm just going to leave this as Monday and I'm going to click on next. Next, we're going to click on the target here and we're going to make the target an AWS Lambda function, which is what we just built. And we're going to select the function. I have too many functions here. I'm getting lost by crypto with Kraken, which is the one that we just built also. And we're going to click on next. We're going to ignore the tags for now. And then we will finalize our rule by scrolling down here to the bottom and just clicking on create rule. So now that our rule has been created, if we ever wanted to turn it off, we could come down here to Kraken automation, which is the rule that we just made. And we can click on disable if we wanted to re-enable it. We could come down and simply click on enable. Now it's going to be back on. Maybe now we say we're done with Kraken forever. We never want to do this again. We'll just come up here, hit delete, delete our Kraken automation. And now you have that Lambda function still, and you could still recreate an automation, but it's not going to be firing every single day. And it's only going to be firing now when you manually go into AWS and click on test. So just enabling, disabling, and deleting these automations is the fastest way to control what is happening in your Kraken or Gemini or whatever API environment you set up within AWS. Next, I just wanted to jump back to the Kraken AWS function that I wrote here and give you guys sort of a better understanding of how this script is working. It does look at least a lot more complicated than some of the other scripts that we've done on this channel. And that's because I'm not using a Kraken Python package. In this case, I am directly interacting with the Kraken API using code that Kraken gives you. And then some little functions that I've written to help myself sort of understand how the Kraken API works. I've made this exact same video now like 10 times. But if you're interested in learning programming, I think that this Kraken example is actually the best one for you to just sort of get your feet wet and play around with. And that's because this code is coming directly from Kraken. We're not abstracting it through some alternative Python library that someone else wrote. So we can come down here to Lambda Handler and just delete this code here. And what we can do instead is let's run this first method called get tradable asset pairs. So we'll just type get tradable asset pairs here and we'll type print get tradable asset pairs and we'll hit deploy and we'll hit test. And so now what we're seeing here is every tradable asset pair available on Kraken. This list is very long and I think it actually got cut off at the beginning because it was too long. So that's just an example. That's one thing you can do here. And when we go to that function, we can see that the method that we're calling this function, this get tradable asset pairs, it's actually a very simple function. All we're doing is we're making a HTTP get request to this URL, which Kraken provided to us. And then we're returning response.json. And in this case, I'm returning result keys, but we could, you know, delete this deploy and see what it gives us instead if we print out the entire JSON package. So you can see here, it got cut off again because I guess there's a character limit on AWS, but you can see that it's giving you fee volume for certain currencies, margin call, margin stop, order min. It's giving you a ton of information about these different currencies. And you can sort of manipulate response.json in the way that I did by using like result.keys to sort of get whatever information you want out of that JSON response that Kraken is giving you. I think that this is a really interesting way for you guys to learn Python programming because in those other videos that we've done with like Gemini or Coinbase Pro, all the functions have been written 
already for you. But here in Kraken, because I connected directly to the Kraken API, what you can do is you can click into the REST API documentation for Kraken and you can search through here and find whatever you want, right? You could click on market data, for example. And if you get a sample over here, if you click on Python, you'll see we have an import request, which we already have, right? And then the only other thing you need is this resp equals results.get and then this URL. And for example, if we actually just took this URL and put it here instead, and then we deploy and we test our method here, now instead of getting the tradable asset pairs, we're going to be getting this public time get server time function. And I'm actually gonna get the entire JSON for it. And so when we hit test, we're getting no error and we're getting a result. And the result is saying Unix time. And then this is the time of Unix on the server. And then this is the RFC formatted time, which is Sunday, July 17th, 2022 at, you know, whatever time this is UTC. So you can see how simple that was. And really you can ping any endpoint using the exact same information. The only reason that stuff like place a limit order has all this other kind of like garbage in it is that this is how we're authenticating that you are who you say you are, right? So this is where your API public keys and private keys are being read into the system. For something like getting the server time, Kraken doesn't really care who you are, but for something like placing a limit order, Kraken really wants to make sure that you are who you say you are. And so you could do the same thing. You could just come back to the documentation and you could type in limit order and you could click on something like add order and you could click over here on Python and you can simply take this code, really specifically probably this response code because we have a lot of this other stuff in here. And you can just make Kraken API calls with the code that we have up here in AWS. And you can do this for anything. You can do it for add order batch, you can do it for edit order, cancel order. The structure for you to mess around and do whatever you want with this Kraken API is all in this file. And so I think if you guys are really interested in programming or learning more about programming and learning more about how to build your own API connection with something like Kraken, but really this format is exactly the same for almost any API that you're going to connect with on the internet. This is really a great place to get started. And hopefully this can be a better teaching tool for you guys versus something like the Gemini video or the FTX video or some of the other videos that I've done on this channel. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys and hopefully it helped you learn something about how APIs work in the first place and showed you that you can actually program your own API without external help from anyone, just using code that these different cryptocurrency exchanges provide to you. These videos are getting a little bit stale for me to make and I'm sure a lot of you that watch all of my videos are like, why did he make another one of these API tutorials, but I do plan to build out similar functionality for Binance US and hopefully get us to a point where we can automate deposits and withdrawals from Kraken and Binance and hopefully FTX US because I think FTX US, if we can automate the deposits, is going to be the lowest fee way that you can dollar cost average into Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. So if you are interested in that content or if you're super bored of this content and you're like, please, Rhett, don't make any more of these videos, go down below and leave a comment. Let me know if these videos are still helpful for you guys or if you think that they're a total waste of time. I do want to build this functionality out regardless of if we're making videos. Maybe I can just release them as blog content or something like that. So definitely let me know what your opinion is down below and I'll take that into consideration when I'm deciding what new videos to make for the channel. Like the video if you learned something today and come back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern for new videos. I love you all. Goodbye.